Brad, as I said earlier, welcome to a uh, Merry Hanukkah, Happy Christmas service under the bridge. alluded to earlier, most of you should be aware, if you're not, this is December 25th, which is what people tend to call Christmas and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the babe that came in a manger to be our Savior. We do recognize that. However, as I've been reminding you, according to Jewish tradition, his birth actually took place a couple of months ago during the Feast of Sukkot. That's September, October, depending on when the Jewish calendar hits. Now, what I say is, doesn't really matter what day we choose to celebrate the birth of Christ, because we just want to celebrate that he was born. Amen? That he came from heaven to be our Savior. And as I thought about this over and over, it dawns on me that we know that Jesus has been in existence forever. He is part of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They have never not been. Jesus, in all likelihood, showed up in the person of Melchizedek when he came to bless Abraham after the, uh, the battle, uh, the winning, and, and the spoils, and brought the bread and the wine. Also in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fire by Nebuchadnezzar they said, why is there a fourth man in the fire? He was rescuing them, and one, there's four men, and one of them looks like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus has shown up when he needed to spiritually in places in the Bible. Now, he came to be born as a human being, and the point I made the last couple of weeks is to consider this. Was he, he wasn't born fresh, because he's always been. So does that mean he was reborn? I think so. In my mind, Jesus' spirit, part of the Godhead, came to be reborn as a babe in the flesh, blood human being, so that we who are in the flesh and had become separated from God through sin could accept Jesus and get reborn in the spirit to be reconciled unto God. Awesome to think about, isn't it? Also, it dawns on me that there is absolutely no place in the Bible where God gives a command to set apart a day to celebrate the birth of his son Jesus. So, and there are some that will remind you that Christmas actually is an adoption of an old pagan winter festival and for whatever reason people decided to adopt that as the time to say that the Christmas story happened. But the Christmas story or the birth of Christ story if you will actually according to Jewish tradition took place again during the feast of Sukkot which was an eight day feast. The feast of tabernacles. And it's at that time that the Jews will spend the entire night outside in what they call a Sukkot or a little hut or a booth to remind them of the times they were wandering in the desert and depending on God. And in all likelihood, Jesus was born in a Sukkot on the first day because Sukkot is an eight-day festival. And tradition also says that being born in the first day, a Jewish young man would be circumcised on the eighth day. So at the end of Sukkot would have been the circumcision of Christ. So I just want you to understand that, not to say that this isn't a perfect day, to say we're glad Jesus was born. Every day is a good day to say that. 
we call it Christmas, that's fine. You know, there are some, and I'll get into the Jewish side of things in a minute, where Hanukkah takes place today. There are some very religious, legalistic Christians, and you hear it all over, but we wrestle with the world that wants to get Jesus out of Christmas. They just want to say happy holidays and all that. And they say, put Christ back in Christmas. There are some legalistic religious Jews that will say, get him out of Christmas because yeah. he was back, he wasn't there, he was back in Sukkot. Here's what I say. And there's also some religious legalistic Christians that will say, well, we shouldn't do this Christmas thing because it's really a pagan festival and we should not be honoring it and putting up lights and decorations and a tree and all that stuff. Um, we're not going to please God by doing that. Well, it's a time of witness, in my opinion, and it's the one time of the year that we can boldly proclaim the name of Jesus and the story of the birth of Christ is publicized all over the place for, for almost a whole month, and that's a good thing because God wants us to be a witness to make others know that a Savior was born. And by accepting Him, praise the Lord, you can be saved. That's a good thing. So why would we want to diss on a time that we're almost allowed, if you will, although people that don't like it will sort of put up with it, we are allowed to proclaim the name of Jesus and the birth of Christ during this season. I think that's a good thing. So we have the birth of Christ a few months ago. We have a delayed... Uh, recognition of that no big deal the point is is we're allowed to talk about it and everybody kind of has to listen unless they just want to turn off the Christmas carols or the TV because it's all over the place there I mean I think that's pretty darn cool now let's get on to Hanukkah which like I said it, it happens it's it's interesting the correlation Hanukkah took place during the time of what we call the 400 years of silence when the Lord didn't speak, but he was speaking through events, really. But in between the Old Testament and the New, there was a period of time in like 167 B.C. where the Jews were in trouble. They had succumbed to the pressure of the Greeks, Hellenism, and were into all sorts of pagan practices. In fact, it was against the law, I believe, for them to do their religious services. They didn't want any Torah study. Uh, they didn't want any things of God going on. They wanted them to participate in Greek beliefs and assimilate themselves, and some of them for the sake of survival, decided to do that. My God, they even did things back then, not the Jews, I believe the Greeks, but in mockery of the things of God, sacrificed a pig on the altar of God in those days. They had all sorts of unholy practices that were going on. And there came a time well, before I get there, let me remind you that in Daniel 11, the prophecy he spoke, which is I studied it out, people believe that it has to do with the end times and the Antichrist, and in part of it may well be that. But he spoke of a wicked king that would take over and, and do godlessness and would proclaim himself God and desecrate the temple. And the king that was in charge was Antiochus... Epiphany, epiphanies, which means visible God. He called himself the visible God. The Jews called him the crazy one. King's Mashuga. He's not God. He thinks he is. We know who God is. Yet they were still ignoring the things of God for their own survival and participating in all sorts of unholy practices. Now some soldiers had gone out to the outward wild areas, if you will, 
the, the wilderness around Jerusalem trying to force other Jews to give in to this practice. And they came upon a family who was led by, uh, I think I made a note here, a man by the same Mattathias and his sons, and they rebelled. And they went to war. And they said, who is with God? You be with us. And they fought battles and overcame. One of his sons was nicknamed Judah Maccabee. That's why you find in the story of the Maccabees is the story of Hanukkah. As I studied it out, Mac Judah Maccabee actually means the hammer. They called him that because he fought so fiercely that they could not overpower him. That's right, when the, when the devil comes at your life and you have God on your side, guess what, it's hammer time. You will win if you have God with you and that's exactly what took place. And then they went about the playtime of rededicating the temple. That's why Hanukkah is called the Feast of Dedication or festival of lights, hence the candles, which in Hebrew is Hag Haharim. Because God is a mighty God and he will prevail no matter who tries to go against him. In fact, the battle cry of the Maccabeans was Mi Kamoka Bahalim Adonai, among the mighty who is likened unto thee, O God. So they overthrew the rulers, the king, that was causing them to abandon their faith. And then they went to rededicate the temple. Here's where you get into Hanukkah. They realized they only had enough oil to light the candle, the lights for one day. So they sent an emissary out to go get more oil. Miraculously, the oil, the one day of oil kept burning for eight days. That's why the menorah has eight candles. The center one called the shamash, which means servant, is the one they light to light all the other candles. This, we believe, would represent Christ. Now what's also interesting, being that there's eight days of Hanukkah, Rabbis believe that Hanukkah was actually a delayed celebration of Sukkot because they weren't able to practice it, I guess, with all the pagan stuff going on. So isn't it interesting that on a day which the date of it is actually the Hebrew month of Kishri, or Kislev rather, Kislev, the 25th of Kislev, is Hanukkah. We call the 25th of December Christmas. It's all about the birth, as we like to say, of a Savior. During that same time frame, if they had a delayed celebration for Sukkot, it literally has to do with the same thing because the belief is, is that Jesus was born during Sukkot. So we have a delayed celebration, much like we, if we understand that Jesus wasn't really born on 25th of December, we have a delayed celebration about his birth. I think there's no mistake that particularly right now as we're getting closer and closer to the end times, that we have a time where Hanukkah and Christmas come together on the same day. Or I said earlier, Hanukkah and Christmas collide. It doesn't mean we're supposed to fight each other and say, oh no, no, we're Jews, we're gonna do Hanukkah. Now we're Christians, we gotta do Christmas. You shut up about your menorah. You shut up about your Christmas tree. I think God would say, let's all come together. It's all about the same God and it's all about the same Savior. 
Sukkot, or I mean Hanukkah rather, is all about deliverance, rededication, oil, which is representational of the Holy Spirit, and light, which is representational of Christ. In fact, on that day, if you go to John 10, verses 27 through 28, let me go there. Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. They didn't call it Hanukkah in the Bible. Festival of Lights, Hog Horim. Whoop, there goes my notes, I'm lost now. It's all right, I studied it out pretty good last night. Jesus, it says in verse 22 of John 10, that he was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. That means it was Hanukkah, and he was there for the celebration. And he went on Solomon's porch after the Jews had asked him and said unto him, How long do you make us to doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, and he said, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them from out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Another case where they wanted to stone him for blasphemy. Yeah. And he said, I've shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these good works do you wish to stone me? Why would you want to persecute me for doing so many good things? He says, we don't care about the good things. We, we want to stone you because you claim to be God. Well, he was absolutely correct. As I said earlier, part of the Godhead, he has always been. He was there in creation. He quite possibly showed up in many other events of the Old Testament. Which brings me again to my premise that he was actually reborn on that day when Mary gave birth as a man so that we could receive him and be saved in the spirit. What an awesome thing to embrace and grab hold of. Jesus also previously in John 8, yeah, let us create man in our image. That means there was more than one there at the beginning. That's where we get that from. In John 8, he had proclaimed, I am the light of the world. Uh -huh. So we have Hanukkah. Isn't it interesting how the menorah fits nicely on a cross? Usually the menorah would have the, 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 uh, the round, you know, lampstands, things on it. And in the center, which should be the center of our lives, we have the shamash, the servant, Christ, the one who came to serve and came to save, which would be the candle that would be lit to light all the other candles from. Thank you, God bless you. Oh, we lost a candle. Oi! And because of the horrible time that was going on in the life of the Jews during that season, that rededication and deliverance and rededication needed to happen. What Hanukkah is all about, why they call it Festival of Rededication. Much like ourselves, humanity, who became lost and destitute, sick in sin, and needed to be rescued and reconciled and rededicated to God. So Jesus comes. And we find out later that by having faith in him, 
and accepting the fact that he was born and accepting the fact that he grew up and was crucified and, and rose from the dead that we might have salvation and eternal life is really what the idea of Christmas is all about. The light of the world. The one who had the Ruach Kodesh, which is the Hebrew for Holy Spirit, burning inside of him, giving him all of the power to do all the things that he did. And when he left, the Father sent the Ruach Kodesh to be with us. Remember, Jesus said, it's important that I go. Because if I go, the Father will send you the other comforter. As I spoke last Sunday, I believe that comforter, the Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, was the spirit that gave Christ life as a person, as a human. And when he died, it got released. Because it was bottled up inside of him, going about doing all the marvelous miracles of God. They call Hanukkah a great miracle for that the oil burned bright for eight days when it should have only lasted one. In fact, you've heard of that little game they play with a dreidel? That's that little thing that looks like a top that the kids play with. The Hebrew letters on each side of it actually spell out a phrase that is used in particular at this time, Neskado Hayasham. A great miracle happened there. A great miracle happened when Christ was born and became the light of the world. So is there a correlation between Hanukkah and what we call Christmas? I would say most definitely yes. Because if you can get over the legalism of things, if you can get over, I mean, you know, we're supposed to be a witness to other people that do not believe about God and about Christ. And I know in my life, when I had people witness to me in very legalistic ways, I said, these people are goofy. I don't want to be anything like you. And some Christians will do that. Well, you shouldn't put up a Christmas tree because that, that's a pagan thing and I just, I'm not going to do it because I think God will be unhappy and, and we just think you're wrong. I mean, they don't say it that way, but that's the attitude, you know. What, what does that do to have people say, I want to accept Christ? Absolutely nothing. They say, these people are off the rocker. So why some would say, don't celebrate Christmas, or some would say, put Christ back in Christmas, or the Jewish side would say, don't put him in there because he was back at Sukkot, as I said earlier. How marvelous is it that we have a time of year where publicly and boldly all over the world the story of the birth of Christ is focused on. And that is the beginnings of the gospel that God wants everyone to receive and understand. Not just that he was crucified, because he had to be born first, right? Not just that he was crucified and died on the cross to take on the sin of the world and to be the savior for humanity. But that he was born of a virgin and walked this earth as God in the flesh, showing us the awesome things that can be done when you're connected to God. and then to offer us rescue. Best Christmas present ever given to anybody ever anywhere. So, with all that said, I will wish you all Merry Christmas. Embrace Jesus, your Savior. And I will also say Happy Hanukkah. Embrace the light that is in Christ. And the idea of a time of rededication and deliverance. If there's anybody here who needs that, if there's anybody here who realizes they've been far from God, the Jews in the day of Hanukkah 
they were part of the family. They used to worship and read Torah and, and, and do proper sacrifices and the whole bit. And they had backslid, if you will. They had gone away from the things of God. As I said earlier, much like us who needed Jesus because we had gone away is humanity from the things of God. God still loved them. He still provided a way for them to be rescued. And when they came and defeated the evil king that was in power and restored the temple and the miracle of Hanukkah happened. How different is that from the miracle of the birth of Christ that we choose to celebrate on this day? Amen? So if there is anybody that needs that dedication for themselves, yes. you've been away from God, but you say, I want to return. The light of the world is here today to receive you. All you need to do is ask. In fact, you can give God an awesome present today. You say, I give you myself, Lord. I, I give you my rededication. I, I, I give you my promise that I will continue to serve you or that I will walk with you once again. And I promise you, if you're away from him, that's exactly what God wants to hear. So may you be blessed today. If anybody needs to pray that prayer, anybody right now know they do and need to raise their hand to say, I want to pray that prayer to rededicate? Everybody here is saved, secure in their faith, and walking with the Lord, receiving his blessings. Well, praise the Lord. I don't necessarily believe that. That prayer blessed. I didn't do it. God did. Amen. But I was happy to pray for you on Thursday. If there's anybody who that's touching your heart, but you're just a little embarrassed about raising your hand or coming up, remind you that Christ said, if you won't confess me before men, I won't confess you before the Father. But I want to remind you of just how very simple it is. It's as simple as opening one of those Christmas presents you used to get under the tree as a kid. You just simply come to, come to the Lord and say in faith, Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe that you sent him to be born of Mary to grow up to be my Savior. And just say, I accept that today, Lord. I admit that I'm a sinner and I'm lost without Christ, that I used to walk with him, but I've turned my back and I want to rededicate, or that I've never known him and I want to accept him now. As I said many times, it's like the thief on the cross who did three simple things. I am what I am, you are who you are, will you receive me? That's all it takes. I'm a mess, Lord. I believe you're the Savior. I accept that, and I ask you to save me. If it makes you feel better and less religious to do it that way, you're welcome to do it that way. The important thing is that you do it. That you don't just celebrate the idea of the birth of a Savior one week out of the year, but that you embrace that in your heart and carry it with you for the whole year to come. And may you indeed learn after today to not only recognize Christmas time for what it really is and still recognize your Savior, but also consider Hanukkah, which I believe has many correlations of the same thing. Amen. God bless you all. We're going to get into some music now. Any of you care to hang around? Sonny, why don't you come up and do that song you wanted to do? Well, we might just Broadway today.
Test. Test.